Ian Ray and Engineer Francis Del Mendo to introduce our next speaker to serve as to serve as our moderators and to award the certificate. Good morning, sirs. Yeah, good morning, everyone. May I dream? Good morning, everyone. Uh, I am Engineer Adrian Ray from Palawan Chapter. Here with me is my co-moderator, Sir yeah. Francis. Yeah, good morning. I'm Francis Del Mendo from Central Laguna. And to introduce our second speaker for this morning, our second speaker is the 2014 IIEE SLR Governor. He is the Chairman of IIEE Scholarship and Academic Affairs Committee the 2021 Secretary of IIEE Professional Practice Committee, 2009-2010 and 2012 President of IIEE Northern Batangas Chapter, and also the founding President of IIEE Abu Dhabi Chapter. Uh, dear uh, live uh, participants and our participants in Zoom, let us all welcome our second speaker for this morning, Engineer Elmer O. Kasaw. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Sir Elmer. Good morning, Sir Elmer. Thank you uh, very much uh, again, uh, Deputy Gov Adrian Ray uh, from Palawan for the kind introduction and also to Sir uh, Francis Danny Del Mendo. Uh, it's good to be here in the I 21st IAE Southern Luzon Regional Conference and a warm greetings of good morning to all from Dubai. This is actually 5.57 a.m. here. So it's really good morning to all of you there in the Philippines. Uh, today I am tasked to present to you the rules in handling complaints of the IIEE and uh, I'll be sharing my screen. Before I formally proceed to the topic to be discussed, I would like first to introduce to you the Professional Practice Committee 2021 members. Uh, the committee is headed by the chairman, of course, uh, former governor of Metro Manila, Engineer Ariel Duran, vice chairman, uh, former governor of uh, Northern Luzon region, uh, Juan R. Agtrap II and yours truly, uh, 2014 Governor of SLR. As the Secretary, we have the following members. Uh, we have, uh, of course, former Governor also of Southern Luzon Region, Engineer Rosalyn C. Rocho, and the former Governor of Central Luzon Region, Engineer Yolanda P. Hudan. And straight from Canada, we have Engineer Primo G. Beltran Jr., who is a member uh, of uh, Metro Manila region. And we have also a former governor, Alvin M. Lunas from Bicol region. Former governor, Denny S. Orneja uh, from Middle East region, or now being called as the foreign region. Northern Mindanao, formal, former regional governor, Ramil L. Umbina is also our member. And we have former Governor Wilfredo P. Canizares, the three-termer governor of IIEE from Eastern Central Visayas region. And we have our overseer, our very own from Southern Luzon region, the National Secretary Alberto R. Herrera Jr. And also our very own and one of my idols, uh, former National President Engineer Larry C. Cruz as our champion advisor. And of course, we have our very dynamic and supportive, uh, reliable staff of IIEE Engineer Brian S. Pasqua. Okay, so like what I've said, I am tasked to present on the IIEE rules in handling complaints. This is adopted through IIEE Board Resolution number 
the PPC mandate, we the PPC itself is responsible in all aspects of electrical engineering professional practices in accordance with uh, the bylaws of the Institute, the professional practice manual, the rules in handling cases lodged before the Institute, the engineer's code of ethics, and the electrical engineering law. Handles complaint cases and recommend action to the Board of Governors for approval. PPC mandate includes also acts as a grievance machinery for the IIE membership as well as the National Secretariat. And of course, we have this manual, the rules in handling cases lodged before the IIE of the Philippines Incorporated Professional Practice 2015. So we have this flow chart as how do a PPC act on the complaint being lodged to uh, the IIE. So the first step, of course, we receive the complaint, then that complaint has to be verified. When you say you, you submit a complaint, uh, there has to be an, a counter, uh, the, there is uh, a counter affidavit that should be issued by the respondent. You no, know, within the 15 calendar days, that the respondent will be properly notified and there will be a preliminary investigation 15 days after received of the counter affidavit. And uh, the preliminary investigation will uh, be for the period of 60 days. Now, once the complaint is verified, then the PPC will assess it. Uh, if it's a yes, then it will proceed to the investigation of the complaint. And if it's a no, then we will be requesting for additional information. And if we receive the additional information, then we have to, again, verify the complaint. Uh, the uh, purpose of verifying the complaint is for us to determine as to whether there is a prima facie case uh, in relation to the filed complaint. So after the investigation of the complaint, the transcript needs to be prepared by the PPC. Uh, but before the final uh, submission of the resolution, which is under number five of the flowchart, uh, it has to go through our legal counsel of the IIEE for legal opinion. And uh, once the opinion from the legal counsel is transmitted to PPC, then we are now ready to submit the resolution or the investigation report or the recommendation to the IIEE Board of Governors. Then once transmitted and accepted by the Board of Governors, then um, of course they have to act on it and the Board of Governors need to resolve or finally resolve the complaint. After the Board of Governors uh, resolution on the complaint. So it will go to for category C cases, IIE, IIEE BOG forward to BEE for final disposition. For category B cases, IIEE BOG prescribed penalties. Then uh, if BOG already prescribed penalties, then notify respondent and complainant as to final resolution. On the other hand, for category C cases, IA Board of Governor, Governors forward to BE for final disposition. Then 11, uh, the board, board of Electrical Engineering resolved complaint prescribed penalties. And then 12, BE notify respondent and complainant as to final resolution, then uh, case resolved. So that's basically the flow chart. And it has the following uh, 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 duration for each of the uh, process or steps that needs to be followed. And uh, also the corresponding uh, respective colors, you know, which uh, determines the areas of responsibility uh, for each of the committee or the BOG or the BE. 
Moving on, when we say authority, the rules, the rules in handling cases was promulgated by the Professional Practice Committee pursuant to Article 8, Section 3.6 of the Constitution and Bylaws of the Institute of the Integrated Electrical Engineers of the Philippines Incorporated, which vests authority to the PPC to take charge of all matters relating to the professional practice consistent with the Republic Act 7920, otherwise known as the new electrical engineering law and other related laws. Jurisdiction, the PPC shall act on all matters brought before it in accordance with the IIEE constitution and bylaws. Rule one, section four, jurisdiction of the PPC. All actions arising from acts or omissions violating the rights of another relating to the practice of electrical engineering, RA 7920, IIEE Code of Ethics, Electrical Engineers Code, IIEE Manual of Practice or Professional Practice and Constitution and Bylaws of the Institute. Rule one, section five, cases covered. Acts or omissions allegedly committed by the IIE member or by a non-member which has infringed upon the right of an IIEE member. Rule two, section 6.C. No an anonymous complaint, so take note, no anonym anonymous complaint shall be entertained unless there is obvious truth or merit to the allegations therein or supported by documentary or direct evidence, in which case the person complained of may be required to comment upon discretion of the PPC and bank. Rule 2, Section 6. Complainant. The complaint should be written in a clear, readable, simple, and concise language and in a systematic manner as to apprise the PPC of the nature and cause of the accusation against the person complained of and to enable the person to intelligently prepare his defense or answer following the format provided in the next slide. Rule two, section six. When we talk about the person complained of, so sino ba siya? Upon receipt of a complaint, which is sufficient in form and substance, the PPC shall require the person complained of to submit a counter affidavit or comment under oath within 15 calendar days from receipt thereof. That's according to Rule 2, Section 9 of the Professional Practice of the rules in handling cases. And this is uh, what needs to be submitted by the complainant. We have uh, the form on that also, uh, which uh, the complainant and the respondent need to, need to submit to the PPC. So this is the person complained of uh, form. It, it, it is the counter affidavit and for the complainant, this is the affidavit and both needs to be written under oath. The complaint shall at least contain the, the following. One, full name and complete address of the complainant. Uh, B, full name and complete address of the person complained of. C, a narration of the relevant and material facts which shows the acts or omissions allegedly committed by the IIE member or by a non-member which has infringed upon the right of an IIE member. There are the certified true copies of documentary evidence and affidavits of witnesses, if any, and E, certification or statement of non-forum shopping. In the absence of any one of the aforementioned requirements, the complaint shall be dismissed. Rule 2, Section 6. A complaint may be filed at any time with PPC, which may be lodged directly to the IIE National Office, Regional or Chapter, chapter Offices, Rule 2, Section 7. A complaint against an IAE member shall not be given due course unless it is in writing and subscribed and sworn to by the complainant in accordance with the Constitution and bylaws of the Institute. However, in cases initiated by the proper disciplining authority, the complaint need not be under oath. Rule 2, 
Section 6. Withdrawal of the complaint. The withdrawal of the complaint does not result in its outright dismissal nor discharge the person complained of from any liability where there is obvious truth or merit to the allegation in the complaint or where there is documentary evidence that would tend to prove the guilt of the person complained of, the same should be given due course. Rule 2, Section 8. Preliminary investigation. This involves evaluation of documents, records submitted both by complainant and the person complained of, where both are given the privileges of submitting affidavits and counter affidavits. Failure of the person complained of to submit his counter affidavit within the reglementary period or the prescribed period shall be considered as a waiver thereof, whereby the case will be adjudicated based on the document submitted. Rule 10, uh, Rule 2, Section 10. If necessary, both parties may be called for further clarifications. If counter affidavit is received, PPC may decide whether it warrants that formal investigations shall proceed. Fact-finding investigation follows, which serves as preliminary investigations for the proceedings. A preliminary investigation shall commence not later than 15 calendar days from receipt of the complaint by the PPC or earlier depending upon the merit of the case and shall be terminated within 60 calendar days thereafter. Rule 2, Section 11. Within 15 calendar days from the termination of the preliminary investigation, the investigating officer shall submit the investigation report and the complete records of the case to the PPC and bank. Decision or resolution after preliminary investigation. If a prima facie case is established during the investigation, a formal charge shall be issued by the PPC. In the absence of a prima facie case, the complaint shall be dismissed. Rule 2, Section 13. After finding a, of a prima facie case, the person complained of shall be formally charged. The formal charge shall contain a specification of the charges, brief statement of material or relevant facts, accompanied by certified true copies of the documentary evidence, if any, sworn statements covering the testimony of witnesses. A directive to answer the charges in writing under oath within 15 calendar days from receipt thereof. An advice for the respondent to indicate in his answer whether or not he elects a formal investigation of the charges. Notice that he is entitled to be assisted by a counsel of his choice. Also, under the formal charge to the, to the respondent, if the respondent has submitted his comment and counter affidavits during the preliminary investigation, he shall be given the opportunity to submit additional evidence. The PPC shall not entertain requests for clarification, bills of particulars or motions to dismiss, which are obviously designed to delay the administrative proceedings. If any of these pleadings are interposed by the respondent, the same shall be considered as an answer and shall be evaluated as such. Rule 2, Section 14. Answer. The answer, which is in writing and under oath, shall be specific and shall contain material facts and applicable laws, if any, including documentary evidence, sworn statements covering testimonies of witnesses, if there be any, in support of the case. It shall also, be in, it shall also include a statement indicating whether or not the respondent elects a formal investigation, Rule 2, Section 15. Failure to file an answer. If the respondent fails or refuses to file his answer to the formal charge within 15 calendar days from receipt thereof, the respondent shall be considered to have waived the right thereto and formal investigation may commence. Rule 2, Section 16. Even the, even the respondent does not request a formal investigation 
one shall nevertheless be conducted by the PPC, where from the allegations of the complaint and the answer of the respondent, including the supporting documents of both parties, the merits of the case cannot be decided judiciously without conducting such investigation. The investigation shall be held not earlier than 15 calendar days, not later than 30 calendar days from receipt of the respondent's answer. Said investigation shall be finished within 60 calendar days from the issuance of the formal charge or the receipt of the answer unless the period is extended by the PPC in meritorious cases. At the, the pre-hearing conference, at the commencement of the formal investigation, the PPC may conduct a pre-hearing conference for the parties to appear, consider and agree on any of the following. Stipulation of facts, simplification of issues, identification and making of evidence of the parties, waiver of objections to admissibility of evidence, limiting the number of witnesses and their names, dates of subsequent hearings, and such other matters as may aid in the prompt and just resolution of the case. The parties may submit position, paper, memoranda, and submit the case for resolution, resolution based on the result of the pre-hearing conference without any need for further hearings. Rule 2, Section 18. Amicable settlement. Parties may enter into an amicable settlement or submit to any of the alternative modes of dispute resolution at any time during the pendency of the case, but before the PPC has entered has rendered a decision. So in the process, it, it is also uh, important uh, for us uh, in the PPC to uh, arrange for that meeting to have an amicable settlement between parties. Uh, of course, the purpose, the very purpose of the amicable settlement is to try uh, for this case not to go further or to, to, to proceed with further investigation. So if both agree, if both parties would agree on the amicable settlement, then the case will be dismissed. But if they did not agree uh, on uh, each other, terms which effectively uh, means that it's a failure of the, the purpose of the conduct of that meeting to arrive at amicable settlement, then the case has to proceed. Continuous hearing until terminated postponement. Hearing shall be conducted on the hearing date set by the PPC or as agreed upon during the pre-hearing conference. Where no pre-hearing conference is conducted, the parties, their counsel, and witnesses, if any, shall be given a notice of at least 15 calendar days before the first scheduled hearing specifying the time, date, and place of the said hearing and subsequent hearings. Thereafter, the schedule of hearings previously set shall be strictly followed without further notice. A party shall be granted only two postponements upon oral or written requests. A third postponement may be granted only upon written request and submit to the discretion of the PPC. If the respondent fails or refuses to appear during the scheduled hearings despite due notice, the investigation shall proceed ex parte and the respondent is deemed to have waived the right to present and to submit evidence in favor during those hearings. Rule 2, Section 20, Order of Hearing. Unless the PPC directs otherwise, the order of hearing may be as follows. A, the prosecution shall present its evidence subject to the pre-hearing agreement. B, cross-examination by the party. C, there may be direct and re-cross-examination. D, the respondent shall then offer evidence in support of his defense following the same order. E, rebuttal and sir rebuttal if any. When the presentation of evidence has been concluded, the parties shall formally offer their evidence either orally or in writing and thereafter objections thereto may also be made either orally or in writing, after which both parties may be given time to submit their respective memorandum, which in no case shall be beyond 15 calendar days after the termination of the investigation. 
failure to submit the same within the given period shall be considered a waiver thereof. Rule 2, Section 23. Decision of the case, the IIEE Board of Governors or BOG shall render the decision of the case within 60 calendar days from receipt of the report of investigation. Rule 2, Section 32. Filing of motion for reconsideration. The party adversely affected by the decision may file a motion for reconsideration with IIEE Board of Governors who render the same within 15 calendar days from receipt hereof. Rule 3, Section 34. So it is clear even after the decision uh, has been made or issued by the Board of Governors, the respondent is, is still given uh, the chance to file his or her motion for reconsideration. When deemed filed, a motion for reconsideration sent by mail shall be then filed on the date shown by the postmark on the envelope, which shall be attached to the records of the case. And in case of personal delivery, the date stamped thereon by the proper office. Rule 3, Section 35. Grounds for motion for reconsideration. The motion for reconsideration shall be based on any of the following. New evidence has been discovered which materially affects the decision rendered or the decision is not supported by the evidence on record or errors of law or irregularities have been committed prejudicial to the interest of the movement. Rule 2, Section 36. Limitation. Only one motion for reconsideration shall be entertained. Rule 3, Section 37. Effect of filing, the filing of a motion for reconsideration within the reglementary period of 15 calendar days shall stay the execution of the decision sought to be reconsidered. Rule 3, Section 38. Filing of appeals, decisions imposing a penalty exceeding 30 days suspension or expulsion from IIEE membership may be appealed to the IIEE BOG within a period of 15 calendar days from receipt thereof. Pending appeal, the same shall be executory except where the penalty is expulsion, in which case the same shall be executory only after reconfirmation by the IIEE BOG Rule 2, Section 39. When case is remanded for violation of respondent's right to due process, if the case on appeal is remanded to the PPC for further investigation, the PPC shall finish the investigation within three calendar months from the date of receipt of the records unless the investigation is delayed due to the fault, negligence, or petition of the respondent or an extension is granted by the IIE BOG in meritorious cases. The period of delay shall not be included in the computation of the prescribed period. Within 15 calendar days, uh, with, within 15 days from the termination of the investigation, the IIEE BOG shall render its decision. If at the end of said period, the IIEE BOG fails to decide the case, the, the decision shall be vacated and set aside. The respondent shall be exonerated of the charge. Rule 3, Section 40. Recommendation for reinstatement of membership. In meritorious cases and upon recommendation of the PPC, the IIEE BOG may commute or remove penalties or disabilities imposed upon IIEE members subject to such terms and conditions as it may, as it may impose in the interest of the IIEE. For this purpose, a petition for a favorable recommendation for the grant of clemency may be filed by a disciplined member with the IIEE BOG upon submission of the following. A, certified true copy of the decision in the disciplinary case with a favorable recommendation by the PPC. B, certification from three reputable IIEE members who vouched that the respondent has become a practitioner of good standing. C, proof of non-pendency of an appeal, petition for review, relative to his disciplinary case before any court or tribunal. 
Rule 3, Section 41. Penalties. Penalties will be provided in detail in the IIE Manual of Professional Practice, but it is not limited to the following. One, suspension. Two, removal from IIEE membership. Three, institution of legal action. Rule 4, Section 42. Thank you very much for listening and have a great day ahead, everyone. Thank you, Gob Elmer Casau. Uh, any questions from our participants? Hello. So, question from uh, Engineer William Guillermo. Uh, Sir Elmer, ito po yung question. Uh, if the infra uh, infraction happened before the effectivity of this rule, will the rules still in effect? Any anyway, when is the implementation of this rule? Infraction. Uh, ulitin ko sir, no? If the infraction happened before the effectivity of this rule, will the rule still in effect? Anyway, when is the implementation of this rule? Sir Elmer? Uh, yes. So, uh, to answer that, uh, even if, uh, uh, the way I understand the question is, if, for example, the, the uh, case actually happened e even prior to the effectivity of this rule, then um, you can still submit no, the complaint. Uh, the PPC can only act based on the complaint. And uh, of course, even if uh, it happened before or prior to the approval of this uh, rule, it, rule in handling complaint, then it, it still has to be acted by the professional practice committee because like what I've said, uh, whatever complaints that will be submitted or lodged to the IIE through the PPC will have to be acted upon by the committee. Uh, when is the implementation of this rule? The implementation is of course, uh, the, the rule itself was approved uh, on uh, uh, 2014. Then it will be effective immediately after the approval of that rule at that time. Okay, okay, thank you, Sir Elmer. So, any more questions?